our overall unemployment rates are low compared with other countries. Ms. Sylvia Lim said that the 1.9% figure for the unemployment rates does not tell the whole story. But the picture doesn't change much, even if we look at residents' unemployment or any other indicators. At the end of 2015, the unemployment rate was 2.9% for residents and 3% for citizens, which most economists would regard as close to full employment, as there's always some degree of frictional unemployment in any economy. Now, the labour force participation rate has risen from 66.2% in 2010 to 68.3% in 2015, which is higher than the OECD average. If my memory is not wrong, uh, the OECD average is about 60%. So we have a very high labour force participation rate. And importantly, importantly, real median income has grown by 3% per annum over the last five years. Now, overall, our economy is still creating jobs. The ratio of job vacancies to job seekers remains above one. And in fact, if you go to job sites, you know, whether it's Indeed.com or the MOM Jobs Bank, uh, there are many jobs being advertised, including, uh, of course, in the classified ads. But I understand the anxieties of Singaporeans about jobs, because it's not just about jobs, it's about our families. We cannot take for granted that there will be good jobs and incomes in the future. To address these concerns, we need an approach. We need a coherent approach. And this is, first, create the right jobs. Create the right jobs. Second, develop the right skills. And third, enable the right match. So it's about right jobs, right skills, right match. Right jobs, right skills, right match. So first, creating jobs, and even more, creating the right jobs. Now, Associate Professor Randolph Tan said, and I quote, it is no mean feat to continue to generate jobs in an increasingly sophisticated economy packed into one of the most congested cityscapes in the world. Indeed, this is no mean feat. We not only need to create jobs, but given our high cost structure, given the high level of wages already, to create jobs of high value that meet the aspirations of Singaporeans. And to do that, our firms must be competitive and productive. Now, I showed this slide when I presented the budget statement. Now, this scatter plot shows average productivity and average wage per worker. So these are actual wages paid to workers. And you can see that it is an upward sloping line meaning that the higher the productivity, if you look at the right, top right corner, the higher the productivity of the firm, the higher the wages that they pay to each worker. So it shows that productive firms generally pay higher wages. And therefore, when we talk about industry transformation, why, this is why industry transformation is so important, why we need to transform enterprises, transform industry, and transform to innovation because this is the engine, this is the means for us to create a better life for our workers, to create better jobs for our workers. And all these changes require changes which require us to create new companies, create new jobs, and which will require new skills. So, you know, some members have asked, how do this industry transformation program, you know, is it just about helping firms? And some workers have asked, does it help us? Uh, so I want to emphasize this very important point that ultimately these programs are about helping our workers, helping our people. Now, as part of this transformation, firms must also redesign jobs and develop their staff. Several MPs such as Mr. Ang Hing Ki and Mr. Melvin Yong pointed out how important it is for firms to automate and redesign jobs and train their staff in an integrated way so as to bring out the best in every employee and allow everyone to catch up. And I'm happy to say that many firms are doing this and reaping the benefits. So let me share another example. So take Fine Matter, 
a precision, precision engineering firm I recently visited, where I met Winston Ng, a young polytechnic graduate who joined Fine Matter after his course in mechatronics at the Singapore Polytechnic. After working for five months, he was sent by Fine Matter for advanced training in Germany, and upon returning to Singapore, Winston noticed that one of the processes used to bend needles for semiconductor wafer testing could be done better. So he conceptualized a way to automate it, then worked with a systems integrator to develop a machine for it. And as a result of this innovation, productivity increased four times and operations run 24 hours a day. Now, the machine also reduced the training time required for the process from nine months to one week. From nine months to one week. Now, look, investing in one young man, sent him to Germany, came back, increased productivity four times, reduced training from nine months to one week. You know, staff and the other staff are now redeployed to higher value added jobs within the firm. So, Winston's training at the Polytechnic and in Germany, combined with his on the job experience, enabled him to generate insights and innovate successfully. And that is why I've been emphasizing that employers play a very, very critical role in enabling, in not just upgrading their firms, but really uh, in developing their people. And investments like this, the care that takes into investing in people, ultimately pays dividends for the firms. And a young man like Winston gets a better prospect in life. A young polytechnic graduate that is able to conceptualize a machine with such impact. So we must continue to build conducive workplace environments that empower staff to continue learning and improving. So I hope that all firms will invest in their people, young and old, and start a virtuous cycle of higher skills, higher productivity, higher wages which can then be reinvested to develop the firms further. Let me now touch on the next important ingredient, to developing the right skills. Now, when firms create the right jobs, our people must also develop the right skills to take on these jobs. And preparing our people for the future starts from an early age, when our children develop the fundamentals and the love for learning. As Associate Professor Fatima Latif, Mr. Dara David, Mr. Rahayu, Mazam and other members have said, we must build the confidence of our young, broaden their learning, and stimulate their curiosity as early as possible. It is a powerful force that will keep them learning and help them overcome challenges in their lives. To deepen lifelong learning, we launch Skills Future, with a focus not just on skills of today, but also skills for tomorrow. Now, actually, we have made good progress, and let me cite some data. In 2015, over 260,000 residents took up WSQ courses. 22,000 were enrolled in part-time diploma, post-diploma, and degree-level programs in our polytechnics and publicly funded universities. Now, I salute our people for this diligence. In fact, I've met many people who are pursuing part-time courses. I know it's not easy juggling the demands of work, family, and studies. And so really, the spirit of resilience and lifelong learning is most commendable. The success of Skills Future depends on everyone playing their part, not just employees, but also employers. So the government will provide support and resources for those who are willing and motivated to acquire new skills and deepen their skill sets. So under Skills Future, we are developing an online, individualized learning portal for individuals to plan their careers and lifelong learning. The portal will be launched in phases starting from 2017. And some of you will be happy to know this. Accounts will be given to students from primary five and upwards so that they can begin to plan their future learning and skills development. So we are taking your comments about starting young quite seriously. So this initiative it will equip our young people with critical skills for the workplace and the capacity to learn throughout their lives. So I've touched on right jobs, right skills. Now, we need a right match. Now, job seekers, including those currently in, in employment, can avail themselves of a suite of employment and training assistance. 
This includes professional conversion programs and a career support program. WDA and NTUC's Employment and Employability Institute, or E2I, help match workers and jobs and provide training to improve their employability of workers through their career centres. They have successful, successfully placed over 14,000 job seekers in 2015. So 14,000 job seekers, quite an impressive number. And besides employment and training assistance, wage support is also provided <coughs> in some cases. So this year's budget builds on these programs with the launch of the Adapt and Grow program, which will provide support for more Singaporeans to reskill and gain employment. As I mentioned in the budget statement, we expect to more than double the current outreach for PMATs from 2,000 to over 4,000. So we understand the anxiety of some who have been displaced, and that's why this program is being enhanced and doubled. So the Minister for Manpower will speak further on this at the COS. Now, as new industries and new types of jobs emerge, we will need to take our skills and job matching efforts even further. We too have to innovate in this area. And that's why we are launching the Tech Skills Accelerator for the ICT sector. It will pilot a new model for how government partners major IT employers, associations and industry to offer training, certification and job matching services. Three in one. You also reach out to those without ICT background to develop skill sets. And some of you may ask, you know, is it possible to develop ICT skill sets without background? Well, there are certain specific areas that IDS identified, uh, such as user experience and user interface design. If this pilot succeeds, we will replicate it in other sectors, as many of you have suggested. Now, what is critical to sustain the long-term vit what is critical is to sustain the long-term vitality of our labour markets. No short-term fixes, but long-term vitality. Several members have listed the various market innovations over the years in managing our dependence on foreign manpower, promoting local employment, and helping vulnerable groups of workers to find jobs and supplement their incomes. <coughs> 